morning. Uh, we have Jamie. I see Jamie. Hi, yeah. Jamie. Hi, Hi, Jamie. And the Alexia, did we send it to Alexia as well? Um, yeah. Is Alexia, did she join? Yeah, I think she's, I think I saw her on the. Okay, so and on that note, then I think we can start. Um, so yeah, just double check and then make sure that this is. Yeah, I think we can start. So it will be, it will be, I will talk and then Debbie and then Gemma. Um, and then um, Jamie. And then Elaine will speak and I just do some quick introductions as well, just at the start, if that's OK. So, yeah, I think we're good to go then. So, Elaine, if um, I'll just screen, share my screen first of all, OK? And then somebody just keep an eye to let people in to the meeting then because people will probably stop keep um, joining. OK, um, can you see my slide? Yeah, yeah perfect. OK, very good. So you're, you're all very welcome to this um, international student pre-arrival briefing session um, today um, on Wednesday, the 24th of August, 2022. Um, my name is John Joe O'Farrell and I'm the Director of International Engagement at Atlantic Technological University, Ireland, um, Galway, Mayo. Um, so before we start, I suppose just some housekeeping rules and we, we, we are looking um, for your permission to record this session. Uh, and I hope that's OK. Um, and if anybody has any issues, um, you can let us know. Or um, if you're not happy with that, maybe you can leave the, the, the meeting. Um, it's up to you. But um, otherwise, if you can just let us know. Um, we we'll ask people to please put their mics on mute. And you can turn off your camera as well if you don't want your face to be captured within the actual recording. Um, so if anybody has no issues with that, then I will proceed. So um, we're all very excited this year. Um, naturally, um, we've had, you know, a very difficult um, period, you know, for, for, for over the last two years. So we're really excited about our first full academic term where we're coming back with a, a hopefully what would be a, a more normal campus based experience. Um, so um, fingers crossed that will continue uh, without the uh, throughout the winter period. But um, it's been a difficult time for everybody. Um, and now we're hoping that the, the worst is over and that we can kind of get back to living our lives normal. And in particular, that the student experience can return to one uh, that is a more traditional one. Um, the information in this presentation is being made available to you to, to help you um, prepare and to plan um, for your uh, departure from your home country and for your arrival in Ireland. So uh, we're purposely uh, preparing and we're sharing this information with you now before you actually arrive in Ireland, because I think man much of the information uh, uh, will be too late um, by the time you get to Ireland. So we hope it, you find it useful. Um, know that um, myself uh, and all of us at the International Office uh, will continue to help and support you during your time uh, as a student in Galway Mayo uh, and uh, indeed uh, our colleagues across all of the, the ATU will, will help and support you. Um, and in particular, you know, you, you will probably come across um, colleagues in the Students' Union and the Student Services team tr throughout the academic year, which would be normal. Um, we will also provide an opportunity for questions and answers uh, at the end of the pres presentation. Um, and, and I think as well, we've invited um, a, a very comprehensive team of important colleagues from ATU today to speak with you as well, to share important information with you. 
I'm just going to briefly introduce you to the international office team and I'm just going to get them as well to say hello to you as well and um, maybe turn the cameras on. So um, my name is John Joe Farrell, as I said. Um, I'm also joined here um, from my other colleagues from the international office, including Jennifer Duffy. Good morning, everyone. Jennifer is the Erasmus and the exchange coordinator at ATU Galway Mayo. So Jennifer, you might just give a quick brief hello um, to the students and to, to tell them what your role is um, in, in um, the college. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Lovely to meet you. My name is Jennifer Duffy. I'm the Erasmus and Exchange Coordinator. Um, I have some incoming students, Erasmus students from Europe starting in September, and I see some of you have joined this presentation. So I'm looking forward to meeting you in person. Um, also going forward as well, there might be some international students that might be interested in going studying abroad on either study or traineeship. So um, exciting times ahead. So if you have any queries or anything, you're more than willing to give me a call or whatever teams call or emails, etc. OK, yeah. thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much, uh, Jennifer. Um, and just maybe as well, just for some of those Erasmus students, uh, Erasmus programme has been suspended for over two years now. So we're excited uh, about having some uh, Erasmus students again on, on our campus. And, you know, many of the Erasmus students will have already confirmed their learning agreements or they're more or less confirmed. Um, but we will try and organise a, a session as well, Jennifer, uh, maybe in the first few weeks so that they can meet the, um, the lecturers and the the department just to finalise their, their 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 actual yeah learning agreements um uh, you know in line with the the updated timetables. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Um, and Elaine, you might just uh, say hello, and uh, you'll be speaking to them later as well in the presentation. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, so uh, my name is Elaine, and um, I am the international officer uh, for ATU, uh, ATU Galway Mayo. Um, so I think most of you um, would have had dealings with me now at this stage and I would have been in contact with you um, re regarding your applications and offers. Um, so I'm looking forward to uh, meeting you all in person soon and um, it'll be very exciting um, for the first few weeks. We've uh, lots of events organised, uh, so you've uh, lots of things to look forward to and uh, we really look forward to meeting you. Thanks very much, Elaine. So, quick summary of who we'll be speaking to you today. Um, some of the inter in the, of the us in the international office will be speaking to you again. Uh, Debbie Malai, um, who is the student services manager at ATU Galway Mayo, she will be speaking to you. Uh, Miss Gemma Broderick, who's the university um, nurse, was will be speaking to you. Um, Miss Jamie Byrne from the ATU student union team. And we also have Alexia Ponce, which is a current international student who's going to speak to you about her experiences uh, as a student or an international student uh, in Galway. So on that note, I'm just going to give you a very quick introduction uh, to ATU. And I suppose um, our introduction and, and our, is kind of a, a mixed one because um, previously, prior to April 2022, uh, we were known as Galway Mayo Institute of Technology. So now we're trying to merge our, our, our history uh, as GMIT and our future as Atlantic Technological University. So I suppose a GMIT would have been founded in 1972 as a regional technical college, and then it was upgraded um, to an Institute of Technology in 1992. And there was a name change then in 1997 to Galway Mayo Institute of Technology. Uh, and since then, we have become Atlantic Technological University. Um, we're obviously situated on the west coast of Ireland, which we feel is a, a very attractive a part of Ireland, a very a tourism focused part of Ireland. You know, not that far away from the capital city, Dublin, probably about two and a half hours on a bus or a train. So uh, and there's lots of connectivity uh, between the capital and, uh, and Galway. And again, we're very lucky to be situated on the very famous Wild Atlantic Way, um, which people come from all over the world to experience and see. Um, very accessible as well um, from, from airports. Um, students can fly into Dublin Airport or they can fly into Shannon Airport. And as I said, only two and a half hours from Dublin and probably yeah, about an hour, an hour and a half from, from Limerick. Um, population uh, in Ireland is obviously small, you know, only about five million people and uh, very small in comparison to where 
some of you are coming from and your home countries. But and they, again, naturally, the population of Galway is not that big either. A population of about 250,000 students with 80,000 students uh, within the immediate city. Um, but we, we are known, as I said, as Ireland's capital of culture and tourism. And, you know, this was recognised when we were designated as the European capital of culture in 2020. Um, we are obviously very passionate about, you know, the multicultural city that we live in. And we feel that our university plays a pivotal part uh, in, you know, adding to the cultural fabric of our city. And for that reason, internationalization is very important for us. And to that end, we have a dedicated international office, which helps us to attract international students from all over the world, uh, but also to cater for the needs uh, of international students and focusing on, on supporting those students and supporting you during your journey uh, with us. Um, and we do that by tr trying to ensure you have a very um, you know, positive uh, student experience. And as I said, um, 2022, quite a, a you know extraordinary year for us, all of us in GMIT, all of us in uh, IT Sligo, and all of our colleagues in Letterkenny IT. You know, um, those three institutions no longer exist in the Northwest region because they've now been upgraded and they have um, come together to form what's now known as Atlantic Technological University. So this is our first. This will be our first year to welcome new students to our new university. So um, we are really excited about that and we, we hope you are too. And I'm, I'm wearing my new ATU hoodie here as well for, for today's um, call, um, just to familiarise you with some of our new logos and branding. Key facts and figures about ATU. Um, the Northwest region is a very important region, um, and you know geographically it's one of the, the biggest regions in Ireland uh, in the Northwest. Um, it's we've got eight um, research centres spread across um, all of the various campuses of ATU. Um, there's eight campuses at the moment. You know that may be extending to nine in, in the new year. Um, we have over two thousand staff and over 20,000 students. Um, and we've got about close to 5,000 graduates annually. And we've got over 593 programs for our students to, to, to choose from. So, uh, you know, the scale is quite impressive when you look at it. Over 20,000 students, um, that has us positioned, you know, as one of the largest universities in Ireland. Um, so we're absolutely uh, now a university of scale. And, you know, we are a really, um, a really important economic uh, driver for the Northwest region. Um, and I think the offering that the collective ATU, you know, has uh, is very attractive for international students. And, you know, particularly for us based in, in, in again, in Galway and Mayo, um, we're very confident that our region has a lot to offer and our city has a lot to offer you as well. Um, just some quick facts and figures uh, for you just to understand again, and I'm going to point here to the international participation in particular, um, and you can see there that there's over 1,387 international students from 93 countries spread across all of the eight ATU campuses. So again, th th that demonstrates, you know, the importance of, um, of internationalization for us across ATU, and it also demonstrates, you know, how diverse our campus has become. And you'll also see as well on the on the bottom right there that, you know, again, we're quite an inclusive campus uh, and everybody is welcome and included in uh, our, our ATU campus, regardless of their religion, uh, be religious beliefs or regardless of their sexual orientation um, or, or anything. Um, you will be accepted in ATU for, for who you are and we will celebrate you for who you are. And, and that is core to our um, equality, diversity and inclusion agenda at ATU. We also have a lot of, uh, you know, kind of traditional and non-traditional learners in, in ATU and, uh, you know, that includes a lot of remote learning and a lot of part-time students. Obviously, our international students have to be on campus and, and within the country to, to study with us. But uh, in addition to that, we support a lot of part-time upskilling uh, in, in the region um, and, and that's important for our local stakeholders. Some important pre-arrival uh, requirements for you to take note of. Um, you must complete the ATU International Office Survey. That will have been sent to you already by Elaine and Jennifer. So some people have, you know, already submitted that information, but 
you know, if the information is, is if you have updated information, we would request that you, you complete that survey again, especially for those of you who are pending visa applications, just so we are kept up to date with the status of your visa application. That, that is important for us because uh, we need to know roughly when you're going to be arriving with us. Um, you need to pay your tuition fees in full if you haven't already done so before you arrive. Um, and then for anybody with conditional offer letters, um, for example, that were subject to the completion of your high school uh, results, you need to ensure that you um, submit those final results to us before you travel to Ireland to allow us to update your documentation and to give you um, a full offer letter because that will be required when you arrive in Dublin Airport. Um, Please ensure that you've packed all important documentation and bring it on board your flight, not in your checked in luggage because stuff can go missing. Um, so all of the important documentation should be kept on you um, throughout your, 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 your journey to Ireland. And then we have a more comprehensive list of all the pre-arrival requirements you know, on the pre-arrival section of our international website. So we would urge you to please uh, go through that in detail. Um, the other thing I've mentioned here is that, you know, do not travel to Ireland unless you have booked accommodation and at, at least uh, at the very least a temporary accommodation in a hotel or something. Um, but 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 ideally you should have full time accommodation booked before you travel. Um, now there'll be more on accommodation later in the presentation, um, but 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 that is important because we've had students coming in the past and they've nowhere to stay and you know we don't want stu students over here uh, in Ireland at homeless and, and that is a, a challenge for us at the moment because there's an undersupply and there's huge demand so um, that, that is important and there'll be more on that again later in, in the presentation. Arrival at Dublin Airport. Again since um, economies have opened up and since tourism markets you know have opened up and we have all started traveling again you know i went on my first flight again in may and then i was traveling again in 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 um, june so uh, i have been victim myself you know to the chaos uh, that is ongoing in some of the airports across europe and across the entire world so you need to take that into account and bear in mind that airports, you know, especially if you're transiting to a busy airport, that the, the, there will be delays and you need to prepare for those delays. And there is the possibility of missing luggage and lost luggage. So, you know, take take that into account and maybe um, pack, you know, some emergency clothes in your carry on luggage and also the, the important documentation. Um, once you arrive in Dublin, there are two main queues, one for EU and one for non-EU. Um, so obviously you will go into the appropriate queue. Um, our Erasmus students will probably mainly go into the EU queue and then the non-EU students will go into the non-EU queue. And that's where you will have to prepare and present your documentation to the immigration officer, including your offer letter, your receipt of fees um, and a proof of accommodation as well. Uh, they will they will often look for that as well. So important that you have all that prepared and ready. Um, most non-EU students will be given a temporary uh, access to, to the country um, and temporary permission will be stamped in your passport for 90 days and that allows you time to travel to Galway um, to settle in in Galway and to allow you to prepare all the documentation that's required um, before you book an appointment to attend the local immigration office in Galway. So uh, that is important and there'll be more on the immigration appointments in Galway later in the presentation. Um, you then also need to book a bus to Galway and the buses can be booked online as well in advance of arrival if you want. Um, and that's probably advisable, um, but obviously uh, it doesn't, it's not necessary. Um, and the results of potential of a delayed flight. Um, most of the buses, um, you know, are only a five minute walk from the, the airport terminal once you exit the terminal and most buses um, depart from zone 13 and 16. And three of the popular uh, connections are with CityLink, GoBus and AirCoach. Now I'm going to hand you over to my colleague, uh, Debbie uh, Malloy, um, Student Service Manager at ATU Galway Mayo, and she will go through um, some of the information on the Student Hub uh, and online and orientation. Debbie, are you there? I am indeed. Thanks, John Joe. Um, uh, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, everybody. I suppose we're all on, on different time zones. Um, as John just said, my name is Debbie Malloy and I'm the Student Services Manager here in ATU Galway Mayo. Um, so uh, I manage areas like the counselling service, the student health service, the chaplaincy, the careers office, 
the access service and the disability service. So I'll um, we, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a brief introduction to, to some of those um, later in the presentation. But I suppose the first um, element that I want to cover today is um, the online student hub, which uh, is our online facility um, for students that has uh, I won't say all of the information that you'll need for your time during ATU, but it certainly has uh, most of the information that that you require. So if you um, log on to studenthub.atu.ie, uh, you will see our um, our uh, four our, well our three representative campuses there um, of ATU. So that's our Donegal campus, our Galway Mayo campus, and our uh, Sligo campus. The Galway Mayo represents the uh, the Galway campus on the Dublin Road, which would be our biggest campus. Um, the uh, Centre for Creative Arts, which is our um, arts arts college, and located not too far from from the 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 Galway campus. Uh, we have a campus in Mount Bellew, which is about forty five minutes in County Galway, and we have another campus, the uh, Letter Frack campus, which is our Centre for of Excellence uh, for Furniture Design, and that is based uh, in Connemara, which is, um, even if you're not attending college there, it's it's actually a lovely uh, drive to, to get to Connemara. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful part of, of the, the country. Um, and then we have Mayo, uh, the Mayo campus, which is um, located in a different county, and that's probably about 45 minutes dri drive from, from Galway City. Um, so once you click in here, there's two options at the moment. One is for registered students, one is for un unregistered students. So the unregistered students, if you click on that, it gives you some information about registering um, uh, with the the with the college. Um, however, I believe you um, you are going to get an email from Elaine um, with instructions on on how to register. So once you <laughs> once you become a registered student, then you'll get a, a, a login, a text message with your um, login to, to to give you access to this student portal and also to um, a lot of the IT facilities that you will have um, that you can avail of while while you're in um, ATU uh, Galway Mayo. So. If you click on registered students, um, there is a section then called the um, the induction. So I think if you want to move to the next slide for me, John Joe. Um, yeah. So that, so when when you when you click in um, the first the first part of it is this uh, receiving information about receiving your login details and so on. Um, and uh, this section here, the 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 welcome program is is the is the section that you need to to click on. Now we're currently updating a lot of this um, uh, of of the portal um, to to reflect the ATU, but also to reflect the the new information from uh, from for for this September. So you you can find this section under uh, induction program, and when you click here on um, on the welcome program, you will get to the the information you need about uh, about the induction. So I think you can go to the next slide now. John Joe. Yeah, so this the um you won't see it now if you do it today because as I said, um our the, the Leaving Search, uh, which are the final exams in Ireland, uh, the results are very late out this year. So we didn't have start dates and so on. So we're we're planning everything um accordingly and uh and this information will be here before your start date on uh, for continuing students, it's the 26th of September and the 19th of September for um, for uh, first year students. So, or for uh, sorry, so the way around, continuing students are the 19th of September and the uh, new students are the the 26th. So, when you these QR codes, because they're um, they're the, the the information is not up to date yet. When you click on those. Um, those QR codes, all of the information around your school and department induction uh, will be will be contained in in behind that QR code. Um, and then the uh, induction. Uh, so the second piece then is we have an online um, because of, of COVID, I suppose the the in-house induction 
um, had to be brought online. So that that induction module that's available on the student portal is very useful for you to go through. Um, there's competitions in it and there's some fun, some fun um, activities as well to go through. But it will give you a lot of the information on ATU and um, you know it can be it can be referred to at any point of the in the year uh, if you're stuck for information to go back and kind of it tells you about IT about the library um student services the student portal it'll give you a lot of information there around um all the information you need for um, uh, um attending ATU uh student services also runs a, 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 an induction program which is um, five weeks long, so each week there will be um, a different theme uh, around the first five weeks and the information on what theme. So we have health and well-being, we have careers, employability, uh, we have, you know, if, if you're if you're thinking you're on the wrong course, um, there's the drop in and before you drop out campaign We have healthy eating links to healthy campus. So there's something for everybody there as well in, in the first five weeks. So keep an eye on the posters of, of what's happening every week. And we would encourage you to attend some of those uh, get togethers. And uh, there's some fun events in, in there as well. And it's a great way to to get to know people, I suppose, by by attending those the, um, those uh, activities. And so, again, that QR code there with the first five weeks will contain all of that information once everything has been finalised for us. So if you want to move on to the next slide now, John Joe. Um, so then also on the student hub, I'll just bring you um, bring to your attention the student services section. So I mentioned those were the services uh, within the student services area. Um, our student nurse, uh, Gemma, will will talk to you about the particularly about the health services uh, once I'm finished here. But we also have a counselling service, a chaplaincy service, an access and disability service, um, health and wellbeing supports, um, which are mainly online supports. <coughs> so there's a lot of um, different resources that you can access there without talking to any member of uh, We go on to explain about Healthy campus and the different initiatives that are uh, that are happening there um, across the across the university from healthy campus. So the counselling service uh, is free, and um, there is the the details of the appointment times and how you make an appointment and who the counsellors are, um, are is contained in that section of the student hub. Um, we have an access service which uh, promotes. Uh, widening participation for uh, underrepresented groups in society. So there's a, a lot of activity going on in that area and uh, we would have scholarships and, and the student assistance fund as well. Uh, then we have the disability services. So if um, if anybody needs to register, sorry, I'm just after realising my camera switches. There we go. <laughs> You're looking at the side of my face for a few minutes, sorry. Um, so yeah, then we would have the uh, the disability services. So um, you know, you can you can click on on that link to to find out uh, what what supports they they provide, and the chaplaincy then is uh, available to all students, um, regardless of of faith or no faith. Uh, and um, the chaplain is always there for a chat if uh, you become homesick or if you're finding it difficult to settle in. Uh, the chaplain is always a, a good person to to link in with there for, uh, we'll say, I suppose, more informal um, chats than if, if, if you don't want to access the counselling service. So um, all of that information is available there under the, the, the student hub. Uh, we have yellow doors, so if you're stuck for anything on when you're on campus, find a yellow door and somebody behind student behind those doors um, are st student services staff and they will be able to either help you with your query or um, put you in uh, the, the, the direction of, of somebody that can help. So um, that's it from 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 me from student services. I now pass you over to, to Gemma, who will talk specifically about the health services. Thanks. Thanks, Libby. Thanks, Libby. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Just have the slide there, John Joe. Oh, actually, just just the next slide from that. Just just the four slides today, Elaine, please, that we put in. Did you add the four slides this morning? 
I've incorporated them within these slides just to, to no. keep them in the one. Well, there should be just four separate ones there, actually, John Joe. Anyway, I'll talk around them, will I? Yeah, yeah. Most, okay. most of it is the same. OK, there are just a few, um, a, few, a few differences there, actually, in the first paragraph there, for example. OK, so Jana Brodrick is my name. I'm one of the uh, nurses working in the Student Health Unit in the Galway City uh, main Dublin Road campus. OK, the Student Health Unit provides acute illness and emergency supports to students uh, if you become in in college. And what that means is that if you if you suddenly become unwell, during your college time, not if you have something that's ongoing. I'll talk about that now in a moment. Um, if you develop an illness, for example, you wake up in the morning with a very sore throat, you may have a tonsillitis. If you have asthma and you're using your inhaler an awful lot in the last few days, particularly with the cold weather coming in now in the next few weeks, um, you may need to see the college nurse or the college doctor. Or say, for example, you have abdominal pain and you wake up in the morning with acute abdominal pain. You don't know what to do. Come and see us in the medical unit and we will help you. So we're open every day. It's staffed by nurses Monday to Friday, um, open every day right through lunchtime. And we have our doctor service available every morning from 9 to 1 p.m. Um, so the advice we give our international students and Erasmus students, if you become unwell, come contact us as early in the day as possible. Uh, we appreciate that you come early in the day because we can get you to see the doctor then because they, they come from nine to one every day. Um, so the advice has come as early as possible in the morning or, or ring us or email us and I'll talk about that in a minute. Just to note that there is no out of hours medical services available. And I'll talk about that in the next slide. If you just go to the next slide, John Joe, please. Um, no, okay. Okay. OK, OK, I talked about acute illness there and I give an example of what an acute illness could be if you develop something while you're in college. So it is important to register with the local doctor's practice if you become unwell outside of term time. This is particularly important to register with a local practice if you have a pre-existing medical condition. So for students who have an ongoing chronic pre-existing condition that require regular treatment or medications on an ongoing basis, we ask everybody to register with a local GP practice. Because we're not available outside of term time or after six o'clock in the evening, this is particularly important for students. Um, the reason for this as well is you can avail of the doctor's service out of hours services. So say, for example, on a Saturday or a Sunday, if you become unwell, all you have to do is phone the doctor service that you are registered with, and it's a separate to the ATU on campus service. And you will get a voice recording telling you where to go and what to do. So when you phone that service, you can say that I am a student of ATU, but I'm also um, a registered patient of such and such practice. And then there is a doctor's rota on duty for you and they will be able to advise you on what to do and they will see you if necessary. So it's very important that we get this point across to international and Erasmus students and all students who are attending college in Galway and are going to be here for a long time, maybe a duration of one year or two years, whatever, and they don't go home during the holiday times. OK, so there is um, actually, if you just go to the next slide, John Joe, I might see it there. Um, OK. OK. It might actually be on the first one again. OK, if you just scroll down a little bit there. So the Galway's medical practice. Now, these are actually our doctors come from a practice, a GP practice called Galway's medical practice. They're located in Galway City on the east side of the city near the main campus. They will register all our international Erasmus students um, if you wish. You may register, you can register with any doctor's practice in Galway that you wish to go to. But these doctors, this practice here will actually register all our students. Very simple process. They prefer you to email them. The email details are there. They will then send back forms for you to register with them. And simple as that, you are then a registered patient in that practice should you need out of hours facilities going forward or indeed if you want to visit them outside of normal times anytime outside of normal college times so the advice is if you develop an acute illness you can come to the medical unit and we will look after you if you're unsure of what to do come to us anyway and we will look after you we'll advise you and signpost you uh, wherever to go okay um okay let me just see just just the next one there john joe please 
Um, OK, so if you become unwell, the advice is to come to us physically. You can call down the pandemic for the moment. OK, we'd, we'd like to think it's over, but however, there's there's still some COVID-19 around. But the advice for the moment is we are seeing students physically. Please come to us. Please call us. Please email us. We prefer if you actually call to see us if you can, unless you have COVID symptoms, which I'll talk about now in a minute. Um, we have an emergency mobile number also that we just uh, use for emergencies and we did, we'd like you not to phone it unless, unless you come across a medical emergency on campus. Um, we, we try and keep that free for medical emergencies. And then obviously if you're out, out, out of college times and you're in town and maybe something happens or you don't know what to do and it's an emergency, you're down 999 and 112, which is the universal number. OK, and then the last slide, maybe COVID. Is there a COVID slide? OK, so obviously if you have Symptoms, the normal common symptoms of COVID-19, and we're not going to go through them. Everybody knows what they are. A fever of over 38 degrees, um, sore throat, cough, persistent cough. Um, you do not attend campus. OK, you self-isolate where everybody's used to self-isolating at this stage in accordance with their own guidelines. The Irish Health Service guidelines, we call it the HSE guidelines, HSE service in Ireland. The link is there. You can go in there to tell you exactly what to do. Again, if your symptoms are severe, you can contact us and the student tells you. We will ask you to perform an antigen test first so that we can advise you what to do over the phone. So if you have COVID symptoms, you don't know what to do. Phone us in and we will help you. Um, I think that's it. I suppose just to say that we're used to dealing with international students and Erasmus students over the years. Um, you're very welcome to come and ask us for advice. Um, the two nurses are here. Um, every day and we have a doctor service and if we can't help you here, we will help you um, we will signpost you in the appropriate direction. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Gemma. Appreciate your time as always. And um, I think it's re really useful information for, for everyone to kind of be aware of. Um, and next up now, we're going to introduce um, uh, Jamie from the ATU Galway Mayo Students Union team to speak to you. Jamie, are you there? I am, yeah. Hi, how are you? Very good. Hey everyone, so my name is Jamie. I am here to talk to you about the student union, which is the fun part of college life. And hopefully you will be interested in joining us and coming to talk to us. So basically, what is the student union? So when you come here, you are a part of our union of over 8,000 students and five campuses. So we represent everyone. There are four full time officers here. So we have our president, which is Colin Kearney, myself, the deputy president. Um, we have our vice president for welfare, which is Sarah. And we have our president in the Mayo campus, which is Quiva. So basically what we hope to do is represent all students, including the international students. We join committees, we join working groups, we join USI, which is an overall student union across all of Ireland. So we have a lot of impact on that. Um, we hope to help people with academic issues, welfare issues, basically anything you need, anything a part of student life, you come down to us and we'll hopefully be able to help you out. Uh, you can go to the next slide, John. Can you switch the slide? Sorry, I don't think I have to. There you go. Um, sorry. So actual student life, obviously, you know, college is very important, but it's not just about studying, especially if you're coming from abroad to a completely different country. You're going to want to go exploring. You're going to want to make friends and look around. So that's where we come in. We have our clubs and societies, which you'll see in another slide. We have sports teams you can join. We have clubs about music, TV shows, anything like that. Um, we arrange events as well. These events can be on campus. They can be educational like Freshers Week um, and Rag Week, which you will definitely enjoy if you're coming here. It's one of the big things that we do. Um, but we also arrange events off campus. So we arrange stuff like concerts or drag shows, events in pubs, stuff like that, just to get you to know the city itself which is very helpful for people coming from abroad because you probably don't know much of Galway and that will help you see it. So we are also making freshers packs, which you'll get the first week you're here. And in that freshers pack, there will be a map of Galway. So you will know where you're going. You'll know anywhere that's useful to you, like the train station, the bus stations, 
you will get a list of the bus routes so you know whereabouts in Galway you are going and you will get a list of all the fun places the students like to go and where the cheap food is and where the cheap drink are which is what's important to the students <laughs> so you can change the slide now thank you so this is what's very relevant to you guys so we are obviously we have our four full-time officers but there is 8,000 students here and we cannot manage them all and we cannot relate to everyone's situations, which is why we have things called part time officers. So they cover things like specific courses. They will cover science, business, engineering, but we also have an international officer role up for grabs. And if you would like to apply to that, please let us know, because obviously we are all Irish. We cannot understand the international issues as well as you could. And if you would like to help and if you would like to voice the concerns of the international students, for example, if you guys are having trouble with anything, please let me know. You can email me. My email is there on this slide. If you would like to become the international officer, we would love to have you join the team. Um, we also have an office down out by the canteen when you're actually on site. So if you would like to come down and chat to us about this, we would absolutely love that. And we would love to just hear from you because we we represent everyone and you guys are a big part in this. So we would love to have one of you joining our team as a part time officer. Uh, you can change things. So yeah, this is just a list of our clubs and societies. Um, we will have a day where you get to visit all these. There will be a marquee outside the sports hall and you will get to go around and talk to all the individual clubs and you will get to know whether or not you'd like to join them which is very helpful because you can just chat to them in person. So you can change the slide now. Please. Thanks. So this is our big issue for the year, which is the accommodation crisis. Um, so right now in Galway, it is very hard to find somewhere to live. Very, very hard. So I'm assuming you guys already have your accommodation sorted, but for people in Galway, this is the website that you will be using. It's ATU Student Pad, and it is our best way of finding accommodation for our students, as it's extremely hard right now. There are no rooms available. There's no houses available. So we're all struggling a lot, but we're trying our best with this. Um, you'll see the next slide as well. So if you don't have anywhere to live by now, these are a list of resources you can use, but you need to just be aware that there are a lot of people that are trying to scam the fact that there is an accommodation crisis and they will try and take your money and just be very careful and make sure that you're that you're looking at a trusted resource. And if you don't think that they're legitimate, don't give them any money, don't even talk to them. So you can change the slide now. Thanks. So uh, this is one of my last slides. Um, this is just all of our contact details. You can see there, there's little pictures of us. So there's the president, the deputy president, the welfare officer and the mayor officer. There's also the sports officer and the GAA officer, if you are interested in joining any sports teams. So these, no these numbers and stuff, they're available on the they're available on the student website, so you will be able to get them. But please feel free to reach out to us and to talk to us because we're always here and we love hearing everyone's different stories and we love getting to meet new people. So please reach out. You're on mute, John Joseph. Thanks, Jamie. That's very useful information. Um, and um, Hopefully now um, some of the students who, who are still to confirm their, their accommodation will, will get sorted um, in the next few weeks and maybe be able to use some of those resources. But yeah, it's going to be uh, that is a, our big challenge for the year. But um, anyway, we'll keep going. So um, I'll ask uh, Elaine now to um, present the next few slides to you, Elaine. Thanks, John Joe. Um... Hi everyone, um, so 
just a bit about registration now. So I've I've been getting a couple of queries from people um, uh, just looking to register. So at the minute it's not yet available, um, but the plan is that we will be sending out um, emails to all students uh, to go online and register uh, from about the 7th of September. So you should keep a check on your emails. Um, so I will send um, an email to your personal email address on that date. And uh, that will have all the um, instructions um, and web links and everything uh, for you to go online and onto the ATU website and register. Um, and once you've registered, um, your ATU student account will be set up and uh, then um, an email from our, our IT department will be sent to your ATU email address and that will have your uh, login credentials as well. Um, so it's uh, it's very important that you do uh, register uh, as soon as you get the email or or um, within at least a week because um, you'll need that in order to uh, get all your IT access and um, a lot of important information will be sent to uh, your a student email account and you need it in order to get Moodle access as well. So um, you would need that in order to get access to that induction module that's up on Moodle. Um, now, so just um, I know Jamie mentioned a bit about um, upcoming events um, that the Students' Union are organising for all students. Um, so just for in particular for our international students, um, we've uh, arranged, uh, arranged a couple of um, events uh, for September, October time. Um, so it'll be a fun way to get to know other um, international students. Um, so on actually just there on the, the 7th of September, um, we are first of all um, holding another uh, repeat session um, another repeat uh, online briefing session and um, just uh, if anyone does want to attend it again, if they have any other queries or concerns, um, it's mainly for people who weren't able to attend this session, but um, anyone is welcome to come along again. We may add in more information into that session and um, so you're welcome to join again if you wish. Um, so then on the 26th of September, so most students will be starting that day. So first years will be starting on the 26th. And as Debbie mentioned, um, the continuing students will start on the uh, 29th or sorry, the 19th of September. So we are planning to hold uh, a welcome event that evening um, on campus, uh, on the Dublin Row campus. Um, so we will uh, have a number of speakers there. You'll get to meet um, other uh, staff from different departments, such as Students' Union, the chaplain, um, someone from Student Services. So you'll get to meet us all in person and you'll get to meet other um, international students. So it'll be a, a nice event to kind of come along to and uh, meet everyone face to face. Um, also that week, uh, we will be organising um, a, a, a scavenger hunt and um, a student party in Galway City Centre. So the scavenger hunt, uh, it's going to be an event where you'll be collected uh, from the college and dropped into town. You'll be put into a team, you'll be assigned a team and basically you'll um, get to go around Galway uh, with instructions for finding different um, different kind of uh, like places or statues or different kind of things. You'll get a sit, set list of tasks and then um, there'll be a winner announced afterwards. And uh, uh, basically each team is competing against each other. And um, we'll probably have some small prizes um, given out at the end of the day. And after that, we're planning to hold a um, party a, in one of the pubs in town as well. So there'll be some finger food and drinks there. Um, uh, so just uh, after that, then the following week, um, the mayor of Galway is going to come into the college and we're going to have a reception event. Um, the mayor is going to speak and uh, the president of um, ATU will be there as well and uh, some other uh, colleagues and um, you will all be invited. So there'll be some um, food and I suppose it's just a good, another good opportunity to meet um, the other international students again. Um, 
And then lastly, for October then, so we're in at the moment, we're planning to organise another event in conjunction with a, a local um, tourism company. And they um, they have uh, provide bus services and um, they run trips down to popular um, tourist locations ar ar around the Wild Atlantic Way, such as the Cliffs of Moher or Doolin and different places around Galway and Clare. Um, so we're um, finalising that at the moment and we will let you know when that's kind of um, when we have more details about that. OK, so immigration appointments. Um, so I usually get a lot of queries about this at the start of the year. Um, so as John John mentioned um, earlier in, in his section that when you arrive into Ireland, you usually get 90 days to um, register uh, with the local immigration office in Galway. Um, so this year, um, again, like every year, we help students arrange appointments and um, we, we've arranged or we've booked um, appointment slots for students on uh, these dates. Uh, so that's the 9th of October, 30th of uh, October and the 12th of November. And um, so what will happen um, then uh, around that time? Um, so I will send out a booking link to students. Um, so about two weeks before that, I'll send out the email and um, you'll get you'll see all the different times that you can pick and you can pick whatever time you want. Um, also, we will send out instructions to you uh, just to advise you on what kind of documentation you need to bring along with you. So um, you would need to bring your passport, um, proof of medical insurance that you have in place, a uh, proof of funds. Um, so you'd need to bring like a bank statement. Um, and uh, once you go to your immigration appointment and the immigration officer sees all your documentation, um, usually then they would, um, uh, they'll like stamp your passport and they'll provide you with an IRP card and usually your IRP card is posted out to you within three weeks to your Irish address. So that's your card then that you have for the year and um, it's like your kind of um, gives you your permission to remain in Ireland for the purpose of full time study. Um, so just about bank accounts then. So um, we will also help students arrange um, appointments to get their Irish bank accounts set up. So usually you need to have the bank account set up before you go for your immigration appointment. So we are planning to get some dates for students to set up their bank accounts um, in one of the local bank branches. Um, so we're planning to get a date for uh, sometime in September and we will be in touch when we have more information about that. And actually, um, it's not on the slide there, but I forgot to mention, um, I might as well just mention that we have um, a letter a request facility as well, so that uh, when students need um, different types of letters uh, to bring to different appointments, um, like a confirmation of registration um, or a, a letter for your immigration appointment, um, we have a, a letter request facility, so you can go onto this um, web link and you just put input your details and then it will send us an automatic letter request uh, from you. So um, we will share that link with you as well closer to the time. So just at the moment that's been um, tr uh, transitioned over to our new ATU system. So uh, I will share that with you when it becomes available. And actually you will need to be registered um, before you can access that link as well. Um, so just finally there, um, just a bit about email communication. So um, it's it's very important that you keep a check of your emails um, uh, and like check them at least once a day because we will be sending out important information to you um, up until your arrival. And then um, once you're registered then um, and the term time starts, then from that point, we will be sending a uh, communication only to your uh, ATU student email address. So we, we won't be able to contact you or you won't be able to contact us from your personal email address. Um, so we can't do that for, for GDPR reasons. We can only keep the communication um, between um, other email ATU email addresses. Um, so and actually just the last point there, um, we're also, as John Joe mentioned at the start of uh, this uh, briefing session, um, we are recording this um, 
this uh, briefing session and uh, we will uh, post it online as well um, on the pre-arrival section of the website. So um, I just to remind you again, um, it's also a good idea just to keep a check on that um, web page as well, because we will be updating it with more information as we get closer to uh, the start date of, uh, of the new term. Perfect. Thank, okay, thank thanks, you very much. Thanks, thanks, thanks very much, Elaine. Um, and now I suppose we're going to um, ask Alexia to um, speak to you just about uh, her experiences and maybe any advice that she can offer um, as to, to new international students coming in. Alexia, are you there? Hello, yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Alexia. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I yeah, can. Okay. Okay, well, thank you very much, Sandro and Elaine, for the um, opportunity to talk to the, the new um, international students. Um, my name is Alexia. I am 21 years old, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna start my second year there in ATU. I'm doing a bachelor in marine biology, and just to talk about my experience, um, it has been great. The first year was great i think i it was easy to blend in with with everyone to meet new friends um the teachers at atu are great they are very approachable if you are stuck with anything um with your classes if you need extra help or anything they're great um to ask for help they're there for for that <laughs> And um, for friends, um, everyone is very kind and friendly. So it's gonna be very easy for you to make friends and just get along with everybody. I think in this presentation, um, there were um, key things that they talked about like accommodation and just the living experience there in, in Galway. And what, I can tell you is that it's going to be a little bit scary. It was scary for me. Um, I am actually from El Salvador. So right now I'm in El Salvador. I am, um, there's a difference of seven hours from here in Ireland. So it's around five in the morning in here. <laughs> but, um, and it was very scary for me because it was my first time just traveling alone and going to a very different country and everything. But um, with the right team, which ATU has, you can be confident that everything is going to be um, okay. I know the first few weeks maybe can be um, homesick and everything, but it is very important to just uh, try to go out of your comfort zone. That's what's the main thing about this experience, just getting out of your comfort zone and just um, putting yourself out there and trying to not just make new friends, but trying to get the um, trying to get to know the place where you're gonna be living, um, the attractions and everything, because it is a really nice experience just to go to a new, different country and everything. Um, one of the important things that I learned while living in Ireland was the climate. I come from a tropical climate, so going into Ireland was a bit shocking because um, the temperatures and the climate itself is different so just like a heads up go prepared with um, um, clothes and, and sweaters and everything because it is not just um, cold but it is going to be raining most of the time so that's um, that's something to keep um, mindful and afterwards, just enjoy yourself. The, the university is going to be very helpful and their events for everybody, not just the locals or just for international students, but for everyone so you can get involved in, in the societies or clubs. And that's great because that's how you're going to meet new people, um, people that you're going to have um, common interest with. So... And even the international students, just talking with them or the events that they're going to be at the start of the year, that also helps because you're going to be able to link with other international students. Um, there are also other opportunities for international students, like being part of the international student ambassadors. Um, 
at the university and representing the university, I was able to to be part of both teams and it was great just uh, being part of the planning and everything of the event for international students. And the other program, it was great because I was able to share my experience of what was it like being an international student and living in, in in Ireland and at the end of the program I had a a visit to Dublin to go to the um to the award ceremony and meet other um international students so that was also great so just try and get involved and you're gonna have a great time if you want to chat if you have any more questions or anything feel free to contact to contact me in the in the in my email and I'll be gladly to answer and just talk and help you in any way that I can because I know that the process can be overwhelming and um, sometimes a little tricky. I had my personal um, problems and everything so um, if you need anything you can also um, just, um, talk to me and I'll be here to help you. Though. Thank you. Thanks Alexia. Thanks Alexia. Thank you, Alexia. And I think Alexia has has uh, unfortunately missed um, our heat wave in Ireland. Uh, <laughs> she returned home. So, uh, Alexia, you you have missed out on probably one of the hottest summers that we've ever experienced. And you, you'll notice when you meet us all in September that our, our skin color will have changed since the last time you've seen us. We're all now lovely and red. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, and. and we are, our weather forecast uh, are also predicting um, some um, higher temperatures as well for September, higher than normal. Um, so that's great. And Alexia, I might share your email address in the chat as well, if that's OK, then. Yeah, that's OK, no problem. Yeah, perfect. Then I suppose that brings us to the last section then of um, today's briefing, which is, I suppose, the, the questions and answer section. So if anybody has any questions, um, you can put them in the chat or you can turn on your camera or your microphone and you can ask us now and we will do our best to try and um, address your, your query or question. So has anybody any questions they would like to ask? Silence is good. <laughs> Even we had this difficulty when we first uh, pivoted our uh, operations online and uh, many of our lecturers experienced it as well. Um, but uh, usually somebody has some questions. Um, we'll wait uh, another minute or two to see. Does anybody have any questions at all? And maybe if you don't feel comfortable asking the question here, if you want to contact us directly, we'd be more than willing to answer any queries that you have. And as well, just to, to, to take into account, I know some people have asked us this query. Um, I want to see now, can I go back to the slides? If I can move these slides around one second now. Um, they don't want to move here now. Yeah, if I just go back here as well, all of the information is on our pre-arrival website. And I've just put that in the chat for you to be able to easily access it. Um, but in particular, we've got a good few queries about insurance and medical insurance and health insurance. So um, it is important um, that you have medical insurance. So I think I put this on one of these slides. Yeah. Um, so all international students are required um, to have insurance in place. So that that's um, an immigration you know, requirement as well. So if anybody who's a, a non-EU student, obviously if you're not a non-EU student, the information about the immigration appointments is not relevant to you, but that's that's only relevant to non-European passport holders. Um, but um, having uh, medical or health insurance is an important aspect of that. And we've recently updated uh, the um, medical uh, insurance website as well. And I, I'll include that that um, link as well in the chat um, because um, it's a 
important again, similar to what Gemma was saying, it's important to make sure that you have a medical insurance policy that suits your individual needs. Um, and that's particularly relevant for anybody with a pre-existing illness. Um, there is, um, you know, uh, some people will will select the cheapest option that they can get, uh, and that's fine. But but you have to understand that you're coming from potentially different cultures and different health systems. Um, and in Ireland, there's a difference between elective procedures and emergency procedures. And if you will, if you're going to need some elective procedures uh, or consultations when you're in Ireland, it can be very difficult to access those unless you have an appropriate health insurance um, package. And most people in Ireland will have uh, health insurance and most families will have it as well. Um, so, so that is something to take into account. We can't advise you. We've we've put a, a list of options on our website. Uh, some of the bigger companies like VHI and Irish Life have particular packages that they put in place for international students. Um, but we can't choose for you. You have to choose the package yourself to suit your needs and you have to make sure you do the correct research. And that's really important. And particularly in recent years, we've noticed an increase as well in people who are needing access to um, mental health services. Um, and it's important in that regard that you also check as well to see if the policy uh, that you're that you're um, going to purchase will give you any, any particular access to to those uh, resources that are relevant for, for that particular um, medical condition. So um, that's just something that we're getting a lot of queries about um, and, and I want you to go and to cl click on our website and, and I've now put that link in here. Um, I think there is somebody has put a question in the chat. Um, and Jennifer, you've answered it already, have you? Yeah, perfect. I just want to recap there as well, just with the incoming and Erasmus students, some of the information may not be relevant to you, but in relation to the induction, student union information, the upcoming events, registration and the email communication, that is relevant and it's quite important as well to Erasmus students. But um, as I said, if you have any queries or anything like that, you can just contact me and I'd be more willing to um, answer them for you. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, and I've just I found Alexia's email address now, so I'm going to put it in here now. Perfect. If somebody has just raised their hand there, if they want to ask a question. Perfect. We've also put in the link there as well to our medical insurance section of the website. If anybody uh, wants to click on that and familiarise themselves with the details within it, there's also two flyers within that link that have been provided um, by VHI um, and, and Irish Life. So um, we would encourage you to, to look at the details there within those flyers. Um, but again, you uh, have the option to pick any package you want yourself, any insurance provider yourself. Um, um, even in your in your home country, but you just need to make sure that it meets your requirements and also that it meets the immigration requirements if you're a non uh, EU uh, citizen. Um, who who put their hand up, uh, Jennifer? I don't know. They seem to have taken it down now again. So I'd say you may have answered their question. That person, if they if they haven't, we haven't answered the question. If you want to um, ask the question now. I'd say you may have covered it. Yeah. I think then that that's more or less it. Um, yeah, we were just going to on your last slide was just a checklist where so that I suppose finally we want to advise everybody that you need to do a checklist before you come. So um, mm -hmm. it's important that you sit down and you know you you do a checklist. Um, and keep an eye on our pre-arrival um, section of the website, which will be continuously updated right up until the time that you depart your home country and come to Ireland. So that that's very important, um, making sure that you have your flight booked, that you have your accommodation booked, that you have the uh, appropriate travel uh, and you know medical health insurance in place. Um, that you have any materials. Um, oh yeah, another another very important thing to remember is that bring your own device, and that's mentioned on the pre-arrival section of our website. Um, you, you do need to bring your own device uh, to complete your studies uh, at ATU, um, um, a laptop or you know um, an iPad or a tablet, but 
preferably um, some some form of um, a laptop. And, and that is important and it will be necessary because there may be some parts of your, your program that will have some online elements, but they'll most definitely be independent learning required and there'll be project work required. And you will need to be able to do that in your own spare time. Um, yes, you can supplement it by using um, our resources and uh, within the library, but in general, that won't be sufficient. You, you, you will need to bring your own device. You can buy and purchase one in Ireland once you arrive, but you know it's up to you, e either or. Um, and if you, if you obviously, if you buy one or in advance, uh, you may need to make sure that you can get the appropriate adapter, um, so that the voltage can be stepped down to suit uh, the, the the Irish uh, electricity system. And the other thing on that note is as well, just SIM cards. So we will we will have SIM cards. Um, for anybody, we will have Vodafone SIM cards in the international office for anybody, any international student that wants one once they arrive. Uh, and you can collect those from the 7th of September from the international office for anybody who, who's arriving then or, or whenever you, you arrive. Um, that, that may be important. You don't need to use the SIM card. You don't need to stay with Vodafone. You can pick whichever operator you want. There's a number of operators in the Irish market, but uh, we would ju just got this offer from Vodafone this year and last year. Um, so it may be useful for you to just to get you started so you can communicate with home. Um, does anybody else have anything to add then? Gemma or Jamie, Elaine, Jennifer, or I think we've covered a um, little bit now. Actually, John, George, just what you were talking about there, just the SIM cards um, uh, on the pre-arrival section of the website, um, there is a list of a couple of different uh, phone providers there. Um, just if anyone doesn't want to uh, go with Vodafone, if you want to go with a different option, you can just look at the different price plans um, that are available by clicking on the links. Um, also, all the links are there up on the pre-arrival section of the website um, for uh, whatever uh, bus service you want to book. Um, for your arrival in the airport to bring you to Galway. Um, and also, uh, John Joe, you mentioned about um, a list of uh, documents that you need to bring in your hand luggage. Um, so we have got a list of, um, we have the list there as well up on the pre-arrival section of the website. So um, uh, just keep an eye on that. And uh, we'll also be uh, posting um, this video of this recording um, later on today on, on the website, on that webpage. Perfect. Perfect. Gemma, have you had that or uh, Jamie? No, no, I think um, you're all very welcome. If um, you need to know you have a medical question, just contact us and we should be able to help you. Perfect. Thank you, Gemma and Jamie. Yeah, I was just going to say I'm going to throw my email into the chat in case anyone has any interest in discussing maybe being our international part time officer. We would love to chat with you. I could give you a call if you need. Um, but I will put my email in and you can feel free to get in contact for anything you need. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Jamie. OK, I, th I think that that's it then. And um, yeah. I said we will have more information and, and, and potentially updated information at the repeat session of this um, on the the 7th of September. So thank you all and um, wish you the best of luck with your preparation for your journey to Ireland. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. And stop the recording now, Elaine. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.